Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And earlier today, I was, I did a video talking about um, uh, was it pedophiles or just it was about pe people wearing masks. Every everybody got a mask on, and so I dug a little deep into a, a topic that I touched on in one of my videos talking about. How the swim coach was molesting the young, the the the, the, the um having sex with some of the, the the female swimmers, um, and how they um um how they was like seducing them and grooming them and manipulating these young female swimmers, and the reason they do that is because in America we place way too much value on high achievements and when you place too much value on high achievements you will sell your soul you will do whatever it takes to get those achievements to get those those gold awards silver gold whatever it is you will do whatever whatever it takes some people cheat some people lie They'll do whatever it takes to get those medals, those awards, and that's how this that's how this society is. It's very competitive, which is, there's never no competition, but not to the point of losing all your integrity, lowering your standards, losing your principles, lying, cheating, and doing whatever it takes. You know, and that's the point that we've come to in this country. And it's been like that, to be honest with you, for, for a very long time. You know, um, especially on, especially when it comes to uh, young boys and young girls. And, you know, in, in competition. And it is so bad where all of the adults, supervisors, all of the adults, they turn their head when they are made aware of of a crime they turn their head they, they they brush it under the rug that's what the adults do to the children even the parents do it because they want their children to be these superstars so they will sell their children to the highest bidder That's what they do. They will sell their children to the highest bidder in all sports, especially gymnastics, track and field, swimming, ice skating, any sports where the male, where there's a male coach, and, and also in the, uh, the Catholic Church and in Boy Scouts. In any activity, any extracurricular activity or any sports where there's a male coach, your child is in danger. I don't care how many how many coaches of integrity is out there. If there is a male coach anywhere near your young boy or girl, they are in danger. Teachers, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because this country is full, full of pathetic, sick, pedophilia men. They are all online, they are predators. There was a show on television called Catch a Predator. And he used to catch all men from all walks of life. Teachers, priests, bus drivers, coaches, fathers, husbands, truck drivers. This is a sick country. And pedophilia is, is, is rampant. And if it wasn't for the laws, 
pedoph if it wasn't for the laws and a few good men, pedophilia would be legal in this country. A ch every child would a child would get a child will get molested before they leave the hospital after after being born. Bef after they are born, the child would be get molested before they leave the hospital if it was legal. That's how sick the society that we live in. That's how sick it is. No child would be left behind. From pre-K to elementary school, the child is the most vulnerable. They're in their most vulnerable stage when they're young. The, the uncles, I forgot, I forgot about those uncles. You gotta, you gotta watch the uncles, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, watch those uncles. Do not leave them uncles alone with your children and the boyfriends. And the, and the older brother, the friend, not the older brother. The older brother might be okay. The friends of the older brother. Don't leave the the friends of the, of the older brothers alone with your young with your with your young daughters or, or boys. Because you don't know what kind of monster. You don't know what kind of appetite the monster may have. The monster may have want a young boy, or the monster may want a young girl. You don't know his appetite. They savages. So guys, they, they, I mean, they, they are creepy, creepy people. And one of them is up in Washington, D.C. I'm not going to call his name, but we all know they are creepy. Those guys are creepy. They was, they was, they was sex, sexual harassing the pages up in Washington. It's, you know, there is always something. It's always something with these, these men and these boys and girls. You know, and it's been going on for a long time. So, guys, I'm gonna read this article real quick. Um, and guys, I you know, I hate I hate predators, and I hate the enablers of predators. All of them should go to jail, including. The pedophile and and the enabler should all go to jail. Sandusky was molesting little boys in Penn State. It's 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 it's, it's, it's they they talking about a uh, uh, epidemic whatever that it's an epidemic. And you got to watch Grandpa too. Grandpa, he, he might be a pedophile. You got to watch Grandpa. Women, ladies, aunts, do not let your young girls be around men by themselves. Not unless you know them very well. Very well for years. Because you know how those mothers are when it comes to their sons. The mothers can will know that their son is a psychopath, but won't protect the grandchildren from the from from granddaddy or from or from uncle that's there in the basement. Yes, a lot of women have very unhealthy relationship with their boys, and a lot and and, and, they, and they raise psychopaths. Look at the, all the all the school shootings. They were single mothers, except for the last one. The other, other one, the father and the mother, they both got arrested for buying a sick psychopath a gun. All right, guys, let me read the article real quick. Okay, guys, here we go, guys. Sexual abuse in sports. My swim coach raped me when I was seventeen. USA Swimming made it disappear. The Olympics are the fairy tale that predatory coaches dangle before starry-eyed kids to get them to do anything they ask. 
I know because it happened to me. This article was written, written three years ago, guys. And this young lady, she's still trying to get justice for her, uh, for her, for her situation. My mother never got to see me swim fast. I had only started swimming competitively in September. My 13th birthday was in December, and by March, she was dead. My family, my family life was turned upside down as my father drinking became more than just a couple of scotch each night, which was the beginning of the disconnect between the two of us. He barely noticed as I progressed rapidly through the levels of the team putting me in the same group with swimmers who had been in the pool since they were five or six years old. As early as my freshman year in high school, it was clear that I had the talent and work ethic to earn a scholarship to a major Division I university. All I could think about was going to the Olympics. That's the fairy tale that coaches dangle before every starry-eyed kid that becomes a swimmer. A dream that coaches with bad intentions absolutely wield to their advantage, grooming them with the promise of becoming a big-time swimmer as they break you down and tease out performances you didn't know you were capable of. The coaches use predatory behavior to get kids to do anything they ask. I know because it happened to me. As laid out in a lawsuit filed in the Central District of California last week, my swim coach, Scott McFarlane, began grooming me for a sexual relationship when I was 16. I was young and motherless, which made me an easy target. The trouble at home only made it easier. Shortly after my father married, my stepmother told me, Sarah, you're going to have your life. Your father and I are going to have ours. When my father found out my grades were low because I had been skipping more and more classes, he demanded that I quit the team. That was never going to happen. Swimming was something I loved to do and I was going to go into the Olympics. It was the only positive thing in my life at that point. One day my father came to the pool and pulled me out of practice, telling me that if I went back the next day to not come home again. I went the next morning, and when I got back to my house, all my stuff was on the front lawn. Okay, so here's a picture of the lady right here. Sarah Urkerich wins the 100-yard breaststroke at the Colorado High School State Championship. Okay. I stayed at a girlfriend's house for three weeks after my father and stepmother kicked me out. Apparently, my friend's mother thought my dad would eventually give in, but he wasn't the giving in type. With nowhere else to go, Coach McFarlane asked me, a junior in high school who was barely 17 years old, to move into his one-bedroom apartment. Everyone knew I was living with a man in his mid-30s, but no one ever asked me if I was okay or if anything bad was happening to me. The other kids were all focused on winning. The coaches' approval and their parents to were too preoccupied with how their kids would perform. It was a difficult situation, but there were so many different ways he could have handled it, like calling Child Protective Services, but that's not the choice that he made. At the first arrangement was only emotional abuse. Abuse, abusive. He kept a scale in the kitchen and would have me weigh myself before I ate. He would put his hands around my arms to measure them to tell me how weak I was and would call me pooey. After practice, he would then make me ride the stationary bike in the house for at least two hours. This was a common technique to put you down to make you feel worthless so you want to do something. Anything to get something positive out of his mouth. The point was to break down any self-confidence I had. It made it easier for him to sexually abuse me later. Not long after I moved in, Coach McFarlane raped me while at a swim meet in Irvine, California. I did not consent. 
I've been asked countless times why I never reported it when it happened and it took years before the answer became clear to me because I was scared and I had nowhere else to go. He paid for the roof over my head. He paid for my food and for my clothes. He paid for me to travel to do something that I love to do, which was the most important part of my life. I knew it wasn't normal even back in 1986, but it was like I had Stockholm Syndrome. Besides, what choice did I have? After accepting a swimming scholarship at the University of Arkansas, he told me I could not come home for Thanksgiving break if I weighed over 125 pounds. I barely made it through my freshman season, in part because I became pregnant with his child. During Christmas training camp, I was forced to tell my college coach, who flew me back to Colorado so I could have an abortion. Within eight months, I would end a second pregnancy by him. Over the next decade, the mounting emotional toll of this utterly dysfunctional on-again, off-again sex relationship sent my life into a downward spiral. The abortions were a painful and traumatic part of my life which became a tumbleweed that just kept getting bigger and bigger. In 1999, I was hospitalized in Virginia after my first serious suicide attempt. A horrible and appalling story, right? But when it first began around 1986, and as it continued into 1990, my relationship with Coach McFarlane was no secret. There was no reason to hide it. It was considered normal. USA Swimming did nothing to discourage coaches from having sex with their athletes. They barely stopped short of encouraging the behavior. Many coaches just saw the unfettered access to barely clad prepubescent and adolescent girls as a perk of the job. But by the early 2000s, I began to understand that it, it wasn't normal. And national governing bodies like USA Swim began realizing they might have a problem. In 2004, I first explicitly communicated my rape to John Leonard, a member of the USA Swim Sexual Abuse Task Force. But instead of helping me or reporting my abuse to law enforcement or even forwarding my report to active task force on which he said, I was told that I was not unique, that it happens all the time, that I should simply get over it, and then pointed to a prominent coaches Mitch Ivey and Rick Curl, both of whom would be banned by the sport in the next few years, and telling me I need to move on. Yep, that, that, there you go, guys. That, there's your, your uh, enabler. I had all but given up hope of seeing my abuser face consequences for what he put me through then in 2010 i came across a story on abc 2020 about sexual abuse and elite swimming that motivated me to report my abuse to usa swimming which convened a hearing before a review board where mcfarland admitted to having a sexual relationship with me but insisted i was 18 the first time he had sex with me but since there wouldn't be a rule prohibiting coach swimmer relationship until 2013 and since my designated advocate worked for USA Swimming law firm at the time it came as no surprise my allegations was found not credible and it was far too late to seek redress in the civil courts my swim coach had exploited abused and betrayed me and now so had USA Swimming not once but twice most recently, California amended its statute of limitations for sex abuse cases. Starting this year, victims of sexual abuse in California will have three years to bring claims that were previously time barred. Further, the new California law allows for treble damages when the victim proves they were victimized as a result of a cover-up of past abuse. Finally, after all these years, justice may be within reach. Last week, my attorney, John Little, and I filed a lawsuit in Orange County for the rapes I suffered as a 17-year-old girl 
by my USA Swimming Registered Coach as a USA Swimming Sanctioned Meet, as well as various other locations across the United States. And in addition to that, USA Swimming knew of previous and subsequent victims of McFarland and covered them up rather than take action to stop him and protect me and other swimmers. Okay, guys, so that's about it right there. Um, oh, this is the last little part. Okay, let me finish this part. Sadly, my story is one of many. The vast majority of abused athletes are not at the Olympic level, which means that their stories don't generate the critical mass of media coverage necessary to force these organizations into public reckoning that affect meaning, meaningful change but as predatory coaches and the institutions that protect them are coming to learn we will not be silenced ever see guys that's, this is what I'm talking about the predators the psychopaths they are everywhere they are behind every corner they are around every corner and under every rock it's better to assume that they are there and be prepared to defend yourself than to assume that they're not there. That's what I'm talking about, guys. So you really have to watch yourself and be careful when you when you're dealing with these these predators. And they have they have um they have what you call it? Uh, I can't remember the the term that they use. Um. cannot remember the term that they use when they when predators have um a certain not characteristics profile uh, yeah my, almost all predators have the same profile white males and then that, that's it so guys and girls watch your children around every every male all right guys that was a long video it was 22 minutes i just want to put that out real quick because that was on my mind about these psychopaths out here they're everywhere guys and they wear multiple masks you can't tell you can't tell because they got a mask on so you can't tell you can't look at them and tell you know if they if they're lusting after you or they're smiling at you you can't tell so you, you got to keep your guards up. You have to keep your guards up. The matrix is violence. This is all part of the matrix. Hold on, guys. Let me just drink some water. These psychopaths are all a part of the matrix. And the matrix is violence, guys. The matrix is violent. They do not care about anybody. All these athletes, they are all life forces to generate money. This is about money. This is not about winning. This is about using you to extract your life force to generate money. They don't care about you winning a gold medal or, or, or platinum or silver, whatever, whatever they're giving you, bronze or whatever. They do not care about that. That's why they don't care about your life. You are worthless. You are nothing. They'll drown you and kill you and throw you in a lake. That's how these psychopaths feel about you. They don't care about your aspirations. Whether you win or lose, they don't care. You are a object. You're like a dolphin. You're like a circus animal. They do not care about you. And these parents out here that condone and support and enable this level of abuse, they're just as bad. I'm telling you guys that the psychopaths are everywhere. Everywhere. And it's the quiet little ladies, the cuties with the little poodles and the little the little Maltese and the little French dog. Them to be the damn ones. That's crazy as hell. You got to watch them. You got to watch them, I'm telling you. So guys, until next time, keep your mind clean, keep your body clean, keep your car clean, keep your house clean. Get the psychopaths away from you. If you can't run away from their ass, get away, get far, far away from them. 
I'm, I'm saying wherever you go, there's gonna be some more psychopaths. But you need to learn how to identify them psychopaths and keep them away, away from you, out of your life. Okay, guys. Until next time. Make sure that you download and deploy the anti mind virus software. Debug and unplug from the matrix. Drink plenty of spring water to eliminate and flush out the toxins, poison, and chemicals that's in the food supply. Guys, no one is safe. The matrix is violent. No one is safe. We are all being used for our life force. They want our life force. They want to drain us of our energy. They are blood-sucking leeches and vampires. And they want to drain you. They don't care about nothing. They will dig a ditch. They will dig a ditch and throw you in there and cover it up and go have lunch. So guys, until next time, Contraband777 signing off. Now go and conquer yourself. Peace.